Well, it seems like a new library has been introduced named MillionJS, which makes React 70% faster due to its hyper-optimized virtual DOM. So basically, MillionJS utilizes a new virtual DOM, which it claims to be is hyper-optimized than the React's current virtual DOM. It's simple to use and it has a bunch of features, so let's dive in a little bit into what this does and how it's so special. So first of all, you can see over here in the JS framework benchmark, MillionJS is far better in terms of performance compared to Preact or React. So if I click on get started and then here we get something called a speed showdown. Let me click on begin over here. You can see we get this radar over here and over here it says click on a button to invoke render cycles. At the moment there's zero renders because I haven't clicked anything. If I click on MillionJS, then you can see the render count increases, but the radar it seems to be showing a good amount of speed like this highlighted green shadow that you see behind the green radar that is basically the time lag that it's showing so in million js the time lag seems to be not so much but when i click on react you can see it just stops and there's a huge red color section which comes up which shows how slow react is compared to million js which moves real smooth compared to react Alright, so for now it seems like MillionJS is really something cool. So over here it says MillionJS is extremely fast and lightweight, less than 4KB virtual DOM that makes React components up to 70% faster. So TLDR, React components running at the speed of raw JavaScript. Now that's cool, isn't it? So let's try to understand what's really happening behind the scenes. Like why is the hyper-optimized virtual DOM in MillionJS way more better than React? And how one person who's probably a teenager could beat all the React developers at Meta who could not come up with something like this so let's check out the blog section over here and in the blog it says let's read about behind the blog or virtual dom back in blog let's click on virtual dom because it will help us understand why this is hyper optimized so if i go down let's skip the origin story all right so first over here it says about what the react dom generally looks like so to make things short i'll explain this to you so in the react the current virtual dom looks something like this these could be any html tags or elements whatever and then when there is a particular state change the application re-renders right the state change happens and the application re-renders so the virtual dom tries to update itself and it only updates what is necessary and doesn't update the doms that haven't changed so if i click on this plus icon over here you can see it says has this changed no so this remains same it doesn't modify this at all has this changed yes after the state change we get five over here so react notices in the virtual dom that two has changed to five so from one it recursively goes down to two and then it updates this two to five so in the new virtual dom we have five then we go to next has this changed yes it has changed as well because previously we had three but after the state change it seems like we do not have this three at all so yes it has changed so what does it do it removes the three all right for the new virtual dom it removes three and in the previous one it updates the two to five so two steps are done then i go plus again has this changed yes it has changed as well because four was present in the previous render but after the state change four isn't present so we remove four as well then we go to next has this changed yes previously this node was five but then after state change this becomes two so this has changed as well so then we update five to two now the problem with this approach is the diffing depends on the size of the tree ultimately resulting in the bottleneck of the virtual dom the more nodes you have the more time it takes to diff so if this dom structure was long then we continuously have to keep on recursively going down comparing each element and then switching them up and all of this happens during runtime not during compile time which means while the code is being executed and not while the code is actually being written which is the compile time so that is the problem so once we write our code and we execute it when we run it that's when all of these comparisons are made which could be slow considering if this dom list would have been very huge then those recursive calls would have taken some time and things could be slow so that's why in that animation you could see react was slow when the renders increase because let's say maybe the dom list must be very huge and therefore that comparison of recursively going down takes a lot of time compared to million.js where it doesn't. So what is so special in million.js that it happens so fast compared to react? So let's go down over here. The block virtual dom. So one thing you should know is million.js has something called block which is a high order component. It's a property in million.js which if you wrap your component with basically if you wrap your react component with then your component can start utilizing the million.js's hyper optimized virtual dom and i'll show you the example of that later in the code don't worry about that as well but for now just know that million.js utilizes the block virtual dom 
So they have something called a block, which is a higher order component, which once you wrap to your React component, your React component starts to utilize the million GSS hyper optimized virtual DOM. So let's skip all this. Let's understand how million GSS is trying to update DOM in their case. So over here, it does two things called static analysis and dirty checking. TLDR, it says diff the data, not the DOM. Basically, it's saying do not perform operations on the DOM when you do the comparisons. Just check the data. If the data is different, switch them out. Now to go a little in depth on that, I'll go down here and it performs two steps, right? One is static analysis and the other is dirty checking. So in static analysis, the good thing is this happens during compile time or the first thing at runtime, depending on the experimental compile feature or not. So if you use that feature, the experimental compile feature, then things will happen at the compile time. Basically in React, if you remember what I said, after the state updates and the re-rendering happens, after the code is run, which is during runtime, those checks are made, right? Which can be a little problematic, which can be slow if the DOM structure is very huge. But in million js it happens in compile time so while you're coding million js makes sure that it continuously keeps comparing about what's already changing so once we execute the code that entire comparison doesn't have to be done because it's already done during compile time which already makes it so much more faster so over here you can see it uses something called placeholders so while we are coding during compile time million js realizes that we want to update these two nodes all right so what it's going to do is it's going to place a question mark placeholder on both of these nodes because it figured out from the way we wrote our code during compile time that we are going to update these two nodes so it just flags the dom nodes which are going to be updated which are going to have dynamic value so if i click plus over here you can see as the question mark placeholder it says no as the question mark placeholder no in this case does it have the question mark placeholder yes so when node one changes update it to question mark in compile time it figures out that node one will be changing so let's update it to question mark for now so that further later on in the dirty checking process we can directly update this so then as question mark placeholder yes it knows during compile time that this is also about to change and that's why million js had added the question mark placeholder so yes since it's about to change so it says when node 2 changes update the question mark now it's important to remember that in the static analysis part it stores this part the part which we are about to change which it gets to know during compile time it stores the part we are about to change in an edit map so it's basically like a key value pair as you can see over here so whatever that's about to change during the compile time it realizes that the these two nodes are going to have dynamic content based on reading the code then it stores all that information in an edit map so that you can directly access those values while actually updating that question mark to the desired value so now in the edit map we have node 1 and node 2 which have the question mark placeholder which means these are marked for change so now when we actually execute the code or when the dirty checking process happens it can directly just check on node 1 and node 2 and update those values instead of having to recursively go down during runtime or when the code is being executed so these node 1 and node 2 they also store a reference to the nodes which are required to be changed so if i go to plus again it says we check the fifth node for a placeholder and find none so we won't be doing anything over here now in the edit map we have what we need to update so after we execute the code and node one this node when it changes update the question mark it says update the question mark to whatever it's about to change so imagine now i run the code i execute the program so after the edit map is created the dirty checking step can begin this step is responsible for determining what has changed in the state and updating the dom accordingly so this is a very small step step just three steps so here once we execute the code and it gets to know what really needs to be updated it's going to do something very simple so these node 1 and node 2 in the edit mapping that we had created over here as i said they are associated to the node which needs to be updated they have its reference so in the dirty checking process i click on plus over here it sees that yes node 1 is supposed to change based on what was there in the edit mapping so it directly sees that node 1 is supposed to change and after we execute the code it realizes that one has to be added there so it directly goes to that node since node 1 is associated to that node and it puts the value of one right away directly without having to recursively go down anymore then in the next process it updates the two to four so it sees that there is another node which is supposed to be updated after we execute the program it realizes that instead of the question mark we need two over there there in that node and since this node 2 has reference to this uh, node already we just directly replace the value of 2 in place of the question mark and so this again saves time by not having to recursively boil down to this node and we directly get to replace it right away so basically once we execute the code we are just replacing the values 
you're not even recursively going down and the process of recursively going down and mapping or flagging those values which needs to be changed is happening during compile time which is while we are writing the code instead of run time like it happens in react which is after the code is executed so during run time if we make all those recursive checks it becomes pretty slow but if we make all those recursive checks during compile time then the process is pretty smooth because after we run the code we won't get to see any sort of delay since during compile time we have already flagged what's need to be changed so during run time when we use million js we directly just update those values from the map we don't even have to recursively boil down so that's why this approach that you see used by million js is very optimized compared to how react uses it and that's why why over here million js seems way more smooth compared to react which is pretty laggy if you see this all right so now let's just quickly see how to use this in our code if i go to the quick start so there's two things that you need to know to get started with this one is the block and another is the for tag the for is efficient for rendering lists and the block is efficient to convert react components into blocks once you convert a react component into a block you can start utilizing the hyper optimized virtual dom from million js so for block it's pretty simple it's just a high order component so whatever normal react component you have just wrap it with a block exactly how higher order components work and then you can use that component right over here wherever you want in your main application and it will make sure that this part is utilizing the hyper optimized virtual dom but here we can't see the results of that right like how optimized it is but basically that's how it's used so to give a proper example to see the performance they have given an example over here data grid example so here you have an input and a table and then if you go more down so this data equals to build data so all this does is currently in this table we don't have any data right so to simulate a table with data they just have created this function which is being passed the number 100 which is nothing but the rows so it will fetch a data having information for hundreds of rows right so in the data we have the data for the table we are basically calling the data and we are simply within the table mapping through the data and displaying the table so this is very self-explanatory right and this is what it renders these are the three columns and then here these are the three columns as you can see and then this is the input above over here and these are three values at the moment and at the moment there is just one row because over here they have specified the rows to be one now it says we can see that it performs pretty well from 0 to 100 there's virtually no lag once you get higher than 500 or so there's a noticeable delay in rendering so let's try to do that if i say 50 all right i get there's no lag there's no visible lag if i go to 100 there's no visible lag if i go to 20 there's no visible lag let's try to go to 500 I could see a small lag i don't know if you guys could see it let me go to 800 there you go for 800 i could see a good amount of lag now let's say i take this up to 1500 oh that's a huge lag I, let's say i go to 2000 that's a massive lag now so after 100 i can see some noticeable lag all right and this is just using pure normal react like this is pretty self-explanatory react code now they have said more realistic rendering so they have kept the same code for the react but they're also adding this show radar to just help you properly visualize when it becomes slow so like over here when we used react it used to show that red thing right so they are also going to add that over here so that you can properly see visualize it so it's the same code from above they're just adding show radar over here to help you perceive things properly so if i add let's say 20 in this case also we are using normal react if i add 10 it seems fine at the moment if i use 30 or let's say 2 or 100 with 100 it was a little bit slower you could see but then as soon as i go to 500 you can see a lot of noticeable lag like literally my laptop is stuck at the moment not even moving and you could see this huge lag when 500 rows were being rendered so with react this is the issue when we try to render a large list there's a high amount of noticeable lag you can see this is pretty poor performance but now let's go down a bit it says just block it like just use million js's block high order component and that should fix all this that's what they claim let's check that out over here for the same code that we had the component which displays the table information they are saying first we need to abstract the tr into its own component so previously in react we had this part right the data dot map rendering the table row and table data so they are saying you have to extract this to its own component of course because we need to wrap it with the block right we wrap block to the part which we want to optimize since this is going to be rendered as a list we need to wrap this with a block so that it can be optimized so over here it takes that tr and td part keeps it in the function row and then it blocks it all right so we name our component row block now and we use the block higher order component to wrap our initial row component so now this should start utilizing the hyper optimized virtual dom now let's check if that actually works 
So once you have optimized a row, we need to render it as a list, of course. So right now we are just wrapping one individual component like that, right? But we need to map this for as many rows that are there. So in our main component, we will just do data.map as we used to do before. But instead of rendering the row component like we were doing in React, we are now rendering the row block which is the new component we created by wrapping the block hierarchy component to the old row component. And now this should have the optimized virtual DOM. But wait, we can actually use million.js's built-in rendering solution. The next, they want us to use the for tag. So what this means is in a nutshell, instead of using data.map, you can replace this part with for. It's basically the same as mapping through, but it's their own syntax, which has more optimizations. So over here, you can see we replace the data.map over here with for and we pass this property which is as per million JS's documentation and we pass the data we want to display which are the number of rows so this is the same as saying data.map but it utilizes million JS's optimized rendering solutions now that we have integrated million.js and this is how the final code looks like this is the row block that we had created by wrapping the row with the block higher order component then we utilize this row block component over here right under the input within the table right over here and then instead of using data.map we use for each equals to data all right so that's the code you have to use pretty self-explanatory and pretty simple nothing but wrapping the component you want to optimize with the block higher order component and then instead of using data.map just use the for tag provided by million.js and pass data to this each property now let's see if this improves the performance or not in react just remind you again remember this was pretty laggy you can see how laggy it was for when we had input at 500 row data now let's see what happens in the hyper optimized virtual dom solution which is after using block and the for keyword so over here i'll directly start by writing 500 and you could see that was way more efficient and it's still running properly but if i go up you can see for the react implementation it's still so slow right now let's try to increase this let's say i go to 800 and it's still great and i go to 1000 and it's still amazing i go to 1500 this is super good react is breaking when i put 500 as the input but million js even with 1500 it's running pretty smooth and if i go to 2000 still looks amazing and in fact if i go to 9000 it shows a little bit of lag but you can see it's still loading pretty properly the radar is still moving pretty properly whereas react it's still stuck moving so slowly with input as 500 this is pretty slow you can see a significant improvement in performance upon using million js compared to the normal react virtual dom that we have so i don't know about you but the examples seem pretty legit and it seems like it works really really well all this is really impressive to me so as they claim in their website itself that the benchmarks that are shown over here you can't completely rely on that but as per them and as per the examples they have shown it can be seen that this significantly does improve the performance of react and the best thing is you can utilize this library all with react itself by just utilizing a few of million JSS own optimization principles so yeah this seems pretty legit and i suggest you guys should try it out and see for yourself so that's all for the video if you enjoyed this explanation do give it a like and subscribe and as usual stay tuned for more